son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I'll stop right there. Amen. There's more to that scripture. Please look at that when you get a chance in your own reading time. We just read Romans chapter number 28, I mean 8 verse 28 through 31. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading of his word. And now you're in the hands of the praise team. So, amen. Let's give God a hand praise as they come. Think we could do a little better than that. Let's give God. Let's give God. Let's give God the highest praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are blessed? Amen. Is there any blessed people in the place? Is there any blessed people in the place? The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. <clears throat> I may not be able to see what the Lord has done for me, but the Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now. I may not be able to see what the Lord has done for me, but the Lord Lord has done. 
much I owe since Christ is mine. And I'm so blessed, hallelujah, to be alive. Everybody give God praise right now. Anybody blessed to be alive? In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. Hallelujah. God bless you. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time, and we're grateful for all of you who have come to be with us. We apologize for it being a little bit toasty in here, but the technician is working on it right now. And I'm old enough to remember church without air conditioning. And anybody that old, I'm old enough to remember church without AC. Come on, somebody. Uh, but I'm old enough to remember that stuff. See, some of y'all didn't even know what those things were until today. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and now you're using the fan. So use the fan and stay cool. But let's rejoice in the Lord. Because God has something special that he wants to do 
I'm celebrating Mother Moya's in the house this morning. Thank God for healing. Come on, somebody thank God for healing. Hallelujah, thank God for healing. Hallelujah, thank God for being found in the house of God. And hallelujah, I've had to travel a little bit, but I thank God a few things were pleasure and a few things were the business of the work. Hallelujah. On the 15th, Lady Davis and I celebrated 34 years of marriage. Hallelujah. And so we took a little time away, went to Atlantic City. Didn't win any money or the church would be paid for. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we went. The Lord took us and brought us safely and kept us from temptation. Come on, somebody. So for that, we are grateful to the Lord for his goodness and his mercy in our lives. And um, I want to thank those who traveled with us yesterday to Henderson. We had to um, minister for the 56th church anniversary of Greater Refuge Church of Henderson, which is the mother church of Refuge Temple. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because there was a greater refuge. Hallelujah. The Lord moved upon Bishop Rufus Hargrove to plant this church in Burlington, hallelujah, and we started on Markham Street, but look at what God has done for us, hallelujah, he has blessed us in abundance, and we are grateful to the Lord for that, so we celebrated with Pastor and Lady Winston there, and then jumped in the car and went on to um, Tidewater, to Hampton, Virginia, to celebrate with Bishop Eric Jackson in the celebration of his 10th anniversary of Pastor of the Living Waters Church there in Newport News, Virginia. Drove as far as we could, praise God, got a little rest and got up and came on this morning. But I'm thanking God for traveling mercies. Anybody grateful? Some people don't leave the house and get back home. And if you're able to go and come and the Lord takes care of you, that's something to praise God for. And I wanna just say this in a note, I wanna thank God for um, my adjutant in training, Brother Jalen Sellers, I appreciate him so very much. And because I knew I had a full day, I had not planned for him to go with us everywhere. Hallelujah. I thought he's going to go to Henderson and then go on home. And we were literally outside of Richmond. And I looked in the rearview mirror and I said, that's Jalen. That's Jalen. We left him, but he followed us. Come on, somebody. So that he could be there to serve the pastor. You ought to give God praise. That's a blessing. Everybody, everybody doesn't believe in service. And I've had some gifted drivers and adjutants. And back when Jerry was single, he would go with me everywhere. Come on, somebody. He would go with me everywhere. And I remember one time I had to preach in Petersburg. And from there, try to catch a train to Philadelphia for a conference for work. And the service ran long, like services often do. And so we missed the train. And Jerry drove me all the way to Philadelphia just so I could make my meeting. See, people don't think this. This is not hero worship but there's a blessing in serving come on somebody there's a blessing in serving and when I look at Jerry and Sophia and their three daughters and the favor of God upon their family come on somebody it ain't about Pastor Davis but when you serve God will bless your life anybody believe that when you serve God will bless your life I want to move because it's warm and I want to anoint and pray for some people today and so let's stand everybody let's stand let's stand let's stand let's stand oh god lift your hands everybody to the lord jesus christ and i want you to give the lord permission that he can do whatever he needs to do in your life today hallelujah whatever needs to be fixed whatever needs to be mended Whatever help I need today, God, I surrender into your hands. And you can have your way. You can have your way. You can have your way. Father, in Jesus' name, let me say thank you. Thank you for life and health and strength. And thank you for being in the house of God today. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love. And Lord, I need you to show up in this house today. Somebody's broken, somebody's broken, somebody's perplexed, somebody's distressed, somebody's hurting in some way. But God, we trust you right now to do what we know you are able to do. Send help from thy sanctuary. 
and God strengthen out of Zion and help somebody today that needs help. Deliver somebody today that needs deliverance. Save somebody today that needs salvation. Have your way, God, and we'll give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Remain standing with me for the reading of the word from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number six. And bear with me, I want to read verses 24 through 34. When you have it, would you say amen? St. Matthew, chapter six and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat? and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one, one, one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field that today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles or ungodly people seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth, everybody say knoweth, that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's read verse 34 together. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God bless you. You can take your seats. Before you, as you sit down, tell somebody, this is the last day I worry about that. Hallelujah. This is the last day that I worry about that. Hallelujah. God's going to free somebody of fear and worry and anxiety today. I want to be brief so I have time to pray. But these are some statistics that as I began studying came across my computer. More than half of adult women, 53%, report frequently being stressed in their daily life. While 45% of men say the same. I wonder, is it because the men are stressing the women? You don't have to answer that. Answer that when you get home. But more than half of women dealing with stress, 45% of men are dealing with frequent stress. According to the Center for Disease Control and the National Institute on Occupational Safety and Health, the workplace is the number one cause of life stress. I need somebody, to be honest, who's been stressed at work. Work can be a stressful thing. And you get mad, but you can't quit. And you got a couple of reasons. Your mortgage, your light bill, your phone bill, your car note. Because there are some days that you just want to throw those keys at somebody. And throw that name tag and say, I'm done. Come on, somebody. I'm finished. I'm finished, y'all can. Take this job. Y'all remember that old song? <laughs> Y'all remember that old song? But that's stress. Some of us are stressed financially. 
the, according to the American Psychological Association, APA, money is the top cause of stress in the United States. Some of us are stressed because we don't have enough money. Some of us are stressed because we don't know what to do with the money that we have. Some of us are stressed because people keep asking us. Okay, come on here, somebody. Asking us for money. And it's funny that you only hear for them when they want money. Come on, somebody. They, they manage to go all year long, and you don't, they don't talk to you, they don't call you, they don't email you, they don't text you. But when they get broke, you are on my mind. Come on here, somebody. You are on my mind. And suddenly, their need becomes your problem. And so it's, it's stressful. It's stressful, and I, I'll testify that I know what it's like to have more bills than you have money. Anybody live that life? And, and, and it's not because, now some of us have been wasteful. I'll just say it. We've just been wasteful. And we bought shoes when we should have been paying our rent. And now we're dealing with the repercussions of those bad decisions. But sometimes, can I be honest, life just happens. You know, you thought all your tires were good. And the most expensive one is the one that blows out. Come on, somebody. They, they'll say, if it was this tire, it'd only be 80 bucks. But it's that tire, so it's 160 bucks. And I'm trying to figure out if there's four of them, why is this one cost more than that one? But if you don't know cars and stuff, you're at the mercy sometimes of people that see you coming and see the dollar sign written in your forehead. Um, there's a few sources of stress. Um, and I think all of us have talked about financial problems, talked about work. Relationships are stressful. You, I know your husband's sitting beside you, your wife's sitting beside you. You can't say amen. But relationships are stressful. I tell people in premarital counseling that marriage doesn't solve anything. And, that, and I love marriage. I love being married. I've been married 34 years. But people who get married because they think they will, it will solve your problems, you are lying to yourself. Marriage won't make you less wanton or promiscuous. Because if you've got a lustful spirit on you, one woman, one man won't satisfy you. Marriage, if you're gay, marriage won't make you straight. I'm, I'm going to pull the cover off of some stuff. There's some folk in church that got married hoping that laying beside a woman would make them want a woman. If you didn't want her to start with. You ain't going to want to in a negligee. You ain't going to want a naked. You just don't want a woman. I'm preaching hard. I, I, I got it. I got it. So marriage is not going to solve your homosexual issues. Deliverance solves that. But you don't get married to cover something. If you are, if you are a creep, come on somebody. If you're a Casanova, if you're a womanizer, getting married ain't going to make you a good husband. So you, you get married to work on the relationship and to work on yourself in the context of your marriage. Because if you love your wife, you want to give your wife a better you. If I know what I'm talking about. If you love your husband, you want to give your husband a better you. And if you're not trying to get better so you're better in the relationship, then you shouldn't have gotten married to start with. Because you're going to work in that marriage until one of you go to the cemetery. And then after one goes to the cemetery, you're going to be missing them. Oh, I miss them so much. Because that's the grief of having loved somebody. All right? Relationships with siblings are work. You know why? Because you didn't get to pick your sibling. You were either there when they got there. Come on, somebody. Or mama brought you home to them. And some of y'all figured out, mama, why'd you bring him? Why'd you bring her? You didn't get to pick your siblings. They were just there. Come on, somebody. And, and, and family, let me just be honest, family can be challenging because you, th th there's the blood tie there, but sometimes families are at odds. Can I be honest about this? Mama always liked you better. <laughs> or 
that one, she's the cute one, she's the smart one, she's the whatever one, he's the athlete, he's this, and you have years of sibling rivalry that sometimes doesn't get noticed until the family reunion when everybody's 40 and y'all start sitting around the table talking and then all of the negativity that was never dealt with, all the hostility, you know, mama never made you clean your room. I had to clean your room and my room. It happens in some families. And, and your mama says, well, I did it because you were the responsible one. Anybody been the responsible one? You know, sibling got to act the fool because you were the responsible one. And you wondered, why didn't you make them do what you made me do? I knew you had it in you. And, and, and I'm not judging parenting because I have not been a perfect parent. All right? By no means. Joel and Geneva are still here by the grace of God. <laughs> Come on, somebody. They, they saved by the grace of God, all right, because there were times that as parents, Lady Davis and I didn't always do it correctly. We thought what we, we did what we thought was best. Come on, somebody. Never willfully abused or neglected or hurt my children, but you sometimes discover down the road that what you thought was working didn't work. So I'm thinking, and I'm going to say this, I'm thanking God for adult children. And, but I'm going to say this about adult children, because when your children are small, you say, Lord, I'll be glad when they get grown. And when they get grown, you know what they got? Grown up problems, grown up issues, grown up challenges, and they still need their mother and father. That's why you didn't die when your child turned 18. Come on, somebody. Because God knew that they would still need mama, they would still need daddy, they would still need help even now. And if nothing else, they need you praying for them. I hope somebody's praying for their children in here. I hope somebody's laying before God saying, God, bless my son, bless my daughter, strengthen them, help them, make them what they're supposed to be. Because God has a plan and God honors the prayers of parents, mothers and fathers. Parenting is a challenge. And if some of you have lived like I've lived, You've had the responsibility of not only caring for your family, your children, but caring for your parents. And, and that's a challenge. That's a challenge. And I honor anybody that will take care of their parents and not allow them to just become a part of the system. You know, they, 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 they didn't leave you. Come on, somebody. And, and, and if you would be honest, Hallelujah. There were some times when your mama wanted to leave you on the doorstep of a stranger. Come on, somebody. And say, I can't do nothing else with him. Would you please love my son? Love my daughter. And they, they might have even take him to the house and say, no, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They got as far as getting, driving the car up there, somewhere where you didn't know how to get home. And then the Holy Ghost said, no, you can't leave that boy there. And they brought you home. So I had the privilege, and I'm going to call it a privilege. I had the privilege of being able to care for my mother, being able to care for and help care, because I didn't do it alone, being able to care for my grandmother and my grandfather, because they, all three of them, sold so much into me that the least I could do is go pick up some medicine. Come on, somebody. The least I could do is bring dinner to the house. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The least I could do is make sure that they were comfortable. The least I could do is provide a coat or a hat because of all the stuff. You know, I'm going to say this. I was poor growing up, but I didn't even know it. Because my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, and my father helped mitigate the poverty. Hallelujah. Helped mitigate the poverty. And when you understand that, there ought to be an appreciation. I know a couple of weeks ago we had Grandparents Day, and if you were blessed with grandparents, you ought to be giving God the praise because grandparents are bonus parents. Come on, somebody. And, and, and here's the benefit of, of, of bonus parents is that most of them aren't going to really get that involved in trying to raise you, but they will spoil you rotten. You got somewhere to go when you want to eat good. You got somewhere to go when you want to just talk. You got somewhere to go where you can sit on the couch. And all the stuff they wouldn't let your mama do, they let you do. That's 
That's grandparents. You know, when, when my mother <laughs> got with my kids, I'm wondering, like, what happened to the woman that raised me? I'm like, where did she go? Because she and Joel sitting up late at night watching movies. You know, I, I, I come by the house and oh, Joel say, oh, yeah, Grandma and I watch this. Y'all watch that. <laughs> you know, they just sitting up at night watching the movies, eating popcorn, hanging out. But thank God for parenting. And, and I want to say this to everybody that has a child. Don't ever abdicate your responsibility as a parent because you are, in so many cases, the first connection with God that they have. I don't mind saying this. I'm saved because my grandmother got saved. Oh, hallelujah. We were not church people. We were not heading to church. We were not doing church. But one day the Lord filled my grandmother with the Holy Ghost. And she called us in the Bronx and said, y'all got to come down here to Harlem because I got something to tell you. And we went racing downtown thinking something bad had happened. And when we got there, we, she said, I got saved today. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what? Not long after she got saved, my mother got saved. And not long after my mother got saved, my sisters and I got saved. Saints, it's generation. I said this yesterday. I'm going to say it again. Do not give up on your unsaved children, your unsaved family. Keep praying for them. Keep asking God to save them. And every day, open your mouth, lift your hands, and say, God, I thank you because you're going to save my son. I thank you because you're going to save my daughter. I need somebody with faith in here to give God praise. Come on, come on, say it down your road. Somebody I love is going to be saved. Somebody I love is going to be saved. I just don't believe that God would save me and let my family go to hell. I just don't, I just don't believe that. And, and, and sometimes... They're doing stuff that makes you wonder, will they come? But God's got a moment. God's got a season. God's got a day. Oh, God, they're going to call you and say, you know what? When are we going to church? Because something visited me in my sleep, and I need to be saved. Daily life can be a source of stress. Because daily life has the must-dos that we don't particularly like, but they are part of our daily life. Getting up, going to work, buying groceries, buying gas. And you see all of this because there's a stress element to this. You know, we would much rather, and, and you know, we've, we've made, I know I have, we've made DoorDash rich because it happened during the pandemic. We couldn't go out, we had to have stuff delivered. And you start getting used to that stuff. And you, and you sitting on the couch when the grocery store is five minutes away, ordering milk and bread. You gotta go to the store and get your own milk and bread. But you've gotten used to somebody bringing it. And so if they'll bring it so I can sit here and, and not miss the next episode of Gunsmoke that went off the air 30 years ago. <laughs> That's what we do. Church life can be stressful. You can say amen. Church life can be stressful. And it's stressful, first of all, because the enemy is not going to let us have church and not try to disrupt it. I'm going to say that one more time. The enemy is not going to let us do church, engage in ministry, preach the gospel, sing and worship, and not do something to disrupt it. 
And I need to say this because I need everybody to start opening up your spiritual eyes. Anywhere you see the enemy attacking, that's where you need to pray. It can be the subtle things. It can be the easy things. It can be the parking lot conversations. But if it's bringing down the ministry and the work of the church, you got to have enough discernment to do what we did in the old church and plead the blood. Come on, somebody. I plead the blood against every spirit that would disrupt what God is trying to eat shut because I know God's trying to bless us. Anybody believe that? I know God's trying to bless us. And the enemy is not going to let you be blessed without a fight. But greater is he that is in each of us than he that is in the world. Greater one. And here's what I know the Bible says. Upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, God, everybody lift your hands and say, God, anoint the church. Hey, Shatama. Hey, God. Come on, keep those hands raised. God, refresh the church. Keep those hands raised. God, strengthen the church. Oh, Shatama, Sitama. I see what God is trying to do. And I believe in what God is trying to do. So I'm going to glorify him despite anything I feel because I know God is going to bless our church. Everybody with faith, open your mouth right now and give God a great praise because God is going to bless. And let me tell you something. You are not the first person to be fought trying to do ministry. Because, you know, there's this bad tendency to think you're the only one. Anybody going home and thought you were the only one struggling in the church? You thought you were the only one. You know, Elijah felt that way. Elijah went out and said, Lord, I'm the only prophet you got. And then he met up with I believe Opadiah. Opadiah said, Elijah, I appreciate your faithfulness, but you ain't the only one. There's 7,000 that have not bowed their knee. Oh, God. I know we all got struggles, and I know we all deal with issues, but I need to tell you, you are not the only one. And if God is keeping your brother, if God is keeping your sister, He's going to keep you. Saints, let me just say this, and I'm going to move on. I want all of us to make the rapture. I don't want to be in heaven looking for anybody trying to figure out did they make it or not. Come on, somebody. And so I pray, and I know people come and they drift and they have this kind of change and that kind of change, but I believe the word of God that Jesus has a number that no man can number. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I saw them coming from every generation. I saw them coming from every nationality. And saints, I came to tell you, I'm going to be in that number. I might crawl, I might struggle, I might cry, but I may a decision. I am not going back. Oh, Shatama, come what may. I am not going back. I am not giving up. I am not falling apart because God is going to hold me. You know what the Bible says? I give unto them eternal life. And if I hold them in my right hand, no man can pluck them out. Lie, but I'm not coming out of here. Talk about me, but I'm not coming out of here. You at me funny, but I'm not coming out of here. I came over here. Come on, touch two people. Tell them I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here to stay. I'm here to stay. Come hell or high water. I'm here to stay. I gotta move. We can see. The impact of stress. You see the impact of stress. There is so much tension in most of us. We like cats on hot tin roofs. Everything, jumping at everything. Everything is frightening us. A click, an unexpected noise, lights flicker.
your lights go out every night when you shut your eyes. They go out every night. You don't know what's going on around you when you shut your eyes. But it's the tension of the day that follows some of us in the night. I'm talking to somebody in here. You've had so much difficulty sleeping. And it's not because you're not tired, because your body is tired. But the stress has you on edge. So you're waking up every night. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Why are you staying awake when God said, I don't sleep? I'm going to let that hit y'all. Why are you staying awake? Why are you walking the floor, peeping out the windows, and checking the locks for the 17th time? When Jesus said, I don't sleep. I don't slumber. Come on, somebody. When Jesus said, I'm going to give you restful sleep. I'm talking to somebody in here. When we get done today, when you go home tonight, you're going to sleep like a baby. Come on, somebody. And you're going to wake up feeling so much refreshed because you know what? Physically, your body needs to sleep to reset the body. Reset the brain, reset the organs, and it needs that period of time for you to rest. That's why the enemy is keeping us up all night long because he's trying to rob us of our rest. There's an emotional upheaval. I'm going to ask an honest question. I want an honest answer. How many of you went off on somebody and you knew they didn't deserve it? And what they got was all of the frustration that you've been holding against a whole lot of other folk. And they just happened to be the last one to get there. I mean, they got there and they got everything from Genesis to Revelation. And you weren't quoting books in the Bible. But they got everything because of all of the upheaval that is in your spirit. Now, here's what the Bible says. God has not given us spirit of fear, power, love, sound mind. Mind that's in control, a saved mind. Now, why is it so important? Because people say, Lord, save my tongue. He can save your tongue, but if he don't save your mind, the same stuff going to come out of your mouth. He's got to save your thoughts. He's got to sanctify your inclinations and your feelings. So that the right things come out. Some of us, our stress is physically impacting us. It's no mystery. Heart disease is caused by stress. It's no mystery that strokes are brought on by stress. It's no mystery that even some forms of cancer are precipitated by stress. Tell somebody, you better learn how to relax. You better look. When I'm telling you that the enemy is trying to squeeze believers until all of the joy comes out of their life. He's trying to squeeze believers until the stress becomes so impactful. We start bursting blood vessels and having all kinds of other issues. And I understand the need. And I, and I get this. I talked about this the other day. I'm working on this body because I'm trying to keep this body around here. So I'm trying to push away. And y'all pray my strength. Y'all pray my strength. Because sometimes it's difficult because there's some things that I like that don't like me. But if God gives me grace, I'm stepping away from some things. Because this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I'm tired of my temple being flabby. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm tired of my temple, oh God, being too big. I don't, I don't need this much spirit. I need a smaller temple. Come on, somebody. So that temple can live longer. But the stress can be so unbearable that some of us eat to release. Some of us don't eat to release. But God help us to deal with our stress. I discovered this. I discovered this. That a lot of people, most saints, don't sin just out of lust. Most saints sin out of stress. Devil squeezes us. 
devil impacts us negatively. The devil works on us mentally. And then he puts the temptation there. Now, I know I'm telling the truth. He squeezes you. He makes you feel lonely. And when you feel lonely and unloved and rejected, then she calls. Come on, somebody. What's the first thing she say? Baby, you are on my mind. Well, the devil put her there. Come on, put him there. Put you on this mind of this woman you know is no good for you. But because you're stressed, come on, somebody. I, and, and here's the famous answer. I just need something to do. Anybody ever said that? I just need something to do. And all of that is designed to make you vulnerable to temptation. Wait until you're broke. Don't have no money. Got a need. And then the guy that didn't mind spending money on you calls you. Yeah, don't look, look straight ahead. Don't look to the right, sweetheart. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Baby, I was thinking about you. How you doing? Do you need anything? You know it's no strings attached. Come on, somebody. Plenty of strings. It's called bondage. Come on, somebody. But you become prey to that. Some saints drink. Ooh, I said it out loud. Because of stress. Some saints smoke because of stress. Some saints go places they have no business going because they have stress. But let me tell you what the Bible says. Casting all of your care. Oh, God, somebody got to learn how to give it to Jesus. Oh, God, everybody got something going on, but you got to learn how to give it to Jesus. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct thy path. I'm here to tell somebody that if you want to be kept, the Lord is a keeper. And if you don't want to be kept, he'll sometimes show up to keep you and hold on to you and love you. impact of stress affects some of us spiritually. Isn't it weird that you only get negative stuff as you're preparing to go to church? Anybody had that happen to me? Putting on my clothes, trying to get out of the house, and they call me. This happens. That happens. Something else takes place because he wants, the enemy wants that in your mind when it's time to worship. And I came to tell somebody some days you just got to press through. Don't come to the house of God and then allow the enemy to rob you of your experience with God. Now that we're all here, we have endured the heat for the last hour or so. Let's lift our hands and just start praising God. We're here now. Oh, come on, come on, don't be lazy about it. We're here now. And now that we're here, let's glorify God. We didn't come here to complain. We didn't come here to bellyache. We didn't come here to fuss. But we came out to give God the glory. I'm waiting on a real praise to break out in Refuge Temple. I'm waiting on a real praise to break out in the sanctuary. Somebody open your mouth. Offer God the fruit of your lips. The sacrifice of your praise. It doesn't mean my life is perfect, but I came to give God the glory. I'm getting ahead of myself, but grab somebody by the hand and tell them as you praise God, he's going to move your stress. Say it again. As you praise God, he's going to move your stress. The more I praise him, 
the better I feel. The more I praise him, the better I feel. I got conditions, I got struggles, I got stuff, but if I open my mouth and give If I open my mouth and give God the glory, something on the inside is going to break in my spirit. I'm trying to help somebody. Don't be lazy about it. Everybody in this house, give God the best praise you can give him right now. Everybody in this house, give God the best praise. Come on, praise him till it shifts in your spirit. Praise him till it shifts in your soul. Praise him till it shifts in your body. Praise him till it shifts in your mind. Praise him till it shifts in your attitude. Praise him till it shifts in your house. Praise him till it shifts in this house. somebody by the hand and tell him you need to praise the Lord until he starts to move. You need to praise the Lord until he starts to move. You need to praise the Lord until he starts until he starts to move. You need to praise the Lord. in case nobody has said it to you recently God Jesus Christ is concerned about your total person tell somebody the Lord is concerned about all of you he just doesn't want to see you shout he wants to pay some bills come on somebody he wants to open some doors he wants to save your children he wants to heal your body. He wants to make a way in your life. Anybody believe it? The Lord is concerned about all of me. Not just the church me, the family me, the working me, but the living me. He's concerned about all of you. Sit down for a moment. Let me give you three points. Then we're going to pray. The text can be summarized in three places. Verse 24 says, no man can serve two masters. There is a question of allegiance. Ask somebody, who do you really love? Now, I've always been a responsible employee. Go to work on time, stay late, do things other people won't do. Always been a responsible employee. But what will make me leave that job, no matter what I'm doing, is that if there's a phone call about Charity, Reggie, Geneva, or Derry, come on somebody, I'm gonna say somebody got to cover. Because you know why? Because I'm not in love with the job, but I am in love with my family. Come on somebody. And when you love Jesus, the Bible says no man can serve two masters. And forgive me for being blunt, but there's some lying, cheating holes in the church. Yeah, close your mouth, baby. I said it. I said it. I said it. Now, I ain't talking about your side chick or your side lover. There are too many of us cheating on Jesus. Because we'll let anything get in the way between us and Jesus. But when you're in love with Jesus, you don't care what else is going on. He died for me. He was wounded for me. He was buried for me. And I owe Jesus everything. I need somebody in here. To
to praise God like you owe God. Not like you're being passive and giving God a tip, but I owe God. He was there when everybody else left me. He was there when I was forsaken. He was there when I was broken. And I owe God this praise. Open your mouth, Zion. Lift your hand. Question two is a question of trust. Ask somebody, who do you trust? Now, Jesus said, don't take thought about the things that we spend a lot of time thinking about. I want to ask you how many of you thought about what you were going to wear today. Some people plan on Thursday, what they're going to wear on And then they look at it. They don't like it, so they hang it back up. Pick something else out. Jesus said, and what Jesus describes, don't take thought of what you're going to wear. Don't take thought of what you're going to eat. Y'all sitting here right now saying, when he going to get done? Because I'm hungry, and the buffet opens up at 1. If you hurry up and get done, come on, somebody. We can get there and get something to eat. We thinking about food all the time. I told somebody, I was talking to them. They, they're a New Yorker. And they said, Bishop Davis, I just had such a hard time losing weight. And I said, but you walk everywhere. You ride the subways. You ride the buses. You walk everywhere. She said, I'm walking to food. Every time you see me walking, I'm walking to food. <laughs> but Jesus said, don't take thought. Now, here's the reason. Because God has a track record of taking care of those things he creates. Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. But Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed as such of these. He said, take a look, my God, at the birds. And I've watched birds all of my life. And to this day, I've never seen a bird fall out of the sky for hunger. God makes sure there's a worm laid up somewhere. Come on, somebody. And tells the bird where to find it. Says, come out of the tree and look on the sidewalk. It's hot today, so I even cooked the worm for you. But it's right there waiting on you. All you got to do is eat it. Well, if God takes care of flowers... And and if God takes care of birds, don't you think he'll take care of us? He knows you got a mortgage. He knows you've got light bills. He knows you've got phone bills. He knows you've got to drive. He knows your car needs gas. And I just believe that God's going to take care of everything concerning my life. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Somebody clap your hands shout hallelujah last one is a question of priorities and what God God is not trying to take anything but the evil out of your life God don't want your husband God don't want your wife God don't want to take your children. God doesn't want you to take, he don't want to take your job unless he's got a better job. But what God wants is for us to make him the priority. And when God becomes the priority, you will praise him and you will worship him no matter what is going on. There's some people in church I can't tell when they're going through. Because they dance broke, they dance when the check comes, they dance hungry, 
They dance after leaving the restaurant. They dance when they got a good report from the doctor. They dance when they got a bad report from the doctor because they're living their lives by the scripture that I will bless the Lord at all. I didn't promise I would praise him just on the good days, but I promised I'd praise him in the rain. I promised I'd praise him when I'm afraid. I promised I'd praise him when hell breaks out. I promised I'd praise him when trouble breaks out everywhere. Is there anybody in here that's an unconditional praise, an unconditional worship, an unconditional believer? So here's what I want you to do. I'm closing. Come on, stand. I'm closing. I'm closing. I want you to think about what's going wrong. I want you to think about what's been jacked up. I want you to think about what is keeping you up at night. And then I want you to step all the way around it and give God the best praise you can give him. That sounds weak, that sounds weak, that sounds weak. I mean, look at the affliction. I mean, look at the struggle. I mean, look at the problem and make the decision. I still owe God the praise. I still owe God the honor. I still will open my mouth, lift my hands, give God the glory. Somebody in the church. Come on, make the devil a liar. He sent you to church to pout. He sent you to church to feel sorry for yourself. He sent you to church to look around and do nothing. But make the decision. I owe God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. I owe it to him. 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 There's a clip in an old song that said, The more I praise him, the better I feel. I need somebody in here to praise the Lord until you start to feel better. I need somebody in here to open your mouth and give God the glory until you start to feel better. Well, she I'm going to praise him till the stress leaves. I'm going to praise him until the anxiety leaves. I'm going to praise him until the fear leaves. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled. There's something on the way to you. Before, before it can get to you, it's going to trip and fall. Oh, hallelujah. Why?
Anxiety doesn't make you a sinner. Anxiety makes you real. Because you can come under so much pressure that the enemy just keeps you anxious. Do you need to give me that oil list in the bottle? So I would save time today. I mixed this oil at the house. And Lady Davis and I prayed over this. But just so y'all know it's consecrated, reach your hands this way and pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, everybody we touch with this oil is going to experience deliverance. It's going to experience power going to experience your manifestation God to the healing of the sick the deliverance of the bound the protection of the believer Lord we stirred it now you stir your anointing in the name of Jesus Christ and bring deliverance now in Jesus name everybody say deliverance now everybody say deliverance now Come on, help me, Minister
to start giving God praise because the power of fear has been broken. The power of fear. Anybody battling a sickness? Come on, come on, come on. Fighting an illness, fighting a sickness. I promise you, the Lord is a healer. I promise you, the Lord is a healer. I promise you the Lord is a healer. I promise you the Lord is a healer. The Lord is a healer. Come on. Come across the front. Come across the front. Don't make a line. Just come across the front. Come across the front. Woo. Today, this altar is the pool of Bethesda. But there's been one change in the rules. It's not about being first. It's about just being in the pool. And because you're in the pool, God is touching your body already. I feel virtue walking through here right now. I feel virtue walking through here right now. I feel virtue walking through here right now. Lift your hands, everybody standing. Don't worry about me touching you. You touch Jesus. Because if you touch Jesus, healing. If you touch Jesus, healing. If you touch Jesus, healing is going to break out in your body. I feel the removal of disease. The removal of heart conditions, the removal, oh God, of movement conditions. Aha, uh -huh, healing. Healing is walking through here. Healing is coming through here. Healing is coming through here. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, they shot that in Jesus name, healing and deliverance right now. In Jesus name, oh God, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I speak healing and health. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, woman of God. Hey, my brother. You feel the virtue. Uh -huh, there it is. You feel the virtue. Now the Lord put the virtue where the need is right now. Touch your body.
anybody else that wants prayer, come on, right here. Anybody else that needs prayer, come on, right here. Right here, right here, right here. Anybody else that needs prayer, come on, right here. I heard him say, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God is about to release life because the enemy, everybody on this road, the enemy is trying to kill you. The devil is a liar. God has put too much life
anointing in this place. And if you feel the anointing, come on and shout hallelujah with me right now. Hey, God, if you feel the anointing, come on and shout hallelujah. And let me tell you what the anointing. Everybody put your hands together and give God praise right now. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Hey, God. Come on, come on, come on. I feel release in here right now. Come on, Zion. Release it here right now. Yokes are broken. Yokes are broken. Try it out. It can't hold you. Try it out. It won't keep you. Try it out. Restricting in the name of Jesus, God says you're free. Oh, she ought to know. Oh, you gonna live your best life. Hey, she ought You gonna live your best life. Hey, she ought Spiritually, naturally, you gonna live your best life. Hey, she cut on my side. Hey, she ought to know. Oh. Don't you dare give up. 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 The devil is a liar. Everything he told you was a lie. But the greater one is going to come and rescue you. The greater one is going to come and deliver you. Don't you dare give up.
anointing in here. I dare you to claim something. I dare you to claim something. I dare you to claim something. Because I feel the anointing at work. shift. I feel a 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 shift. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. started the healing process but I want complete healing for my daughter so Geneva standing for Daphne and when I touch Geneva God's going to touch Daphne if you believe it stretch your hand out this way in the name of Jesus healing from the crown of her head to the sole of Daphne's feet. And you will work a miracle because that's what you do, Jesus. Everybody that has faith, come up and shout hallelujah. Everybody make this declaration. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them, I know I got a problem. I know I've got an issue, but this is the last day that I worry about that. This is the last day. You hear me, devil? This is the last day that I worry about that. This is the last thing that I worry about that. God's got it, Jerry. God's got all of it. God's got the good, the bad, and the ugly. God's got all of it. Richard, this is the last day. Rebecca, this is the last day that I worry about that. This is the last day. your deliverance. I don't know what you're feeling, but I feel your deliverance.
Mike, it's the last day. It's the last day. Oh, she talking about it's the last day. He cut out the robots. It's the last day. Chasing it's the last day. He cut out the robots. All the other see. Why is stuff taken? Listen to me. The first thing that's going to happen is God's going to deliver you from the stress. Tell two people, God's delivered me from the stress. The problem may not leave, but the stress is going to leave you. And while you're praising God for the deliverance from the stress, you're going to look around and the problem's going to leave you. Hey, shut up. I need everybody in here to give God a stress-free praise right now. first the kingdom of God for 30 days for 30 days I'm going to ask you to move everything in your life to the back burner and put Jesus on the front burner do what you got to do pay your bills go to work handle your business but when it comes to what takes up the time in my head I'm going to put everything that is not Jesus in the back of my head. And I'm going to put Jesus right in front of me. And where he leads me, I will follow. I promise you that when you put Jesus in front, all this other stuff loses significance and loses power. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The Lord says some of y'all has made this stuff your God. Because whatever claims your attention, whatever consumes your thoughts, whatever consumes your mind, it has become an idol. Oh, shut up. And you can't negotiate with an idol. You can't reason with an idol. All you can do is throw the idol down. Oh, Shatama. Because there's not room in your life for that idol and God. Nudge somebody, say, throw it down, throw it down, throw it down. Throw it down. Stop giving it more attention than it deserves. Your boss is entitled to eight hours. Come on, somebody. And if he wants more, he got to give you overtime or comp time. Come on, somebody. And y'all working for folk like slaves. I ain't telling you lose your job. But people who don't look like you walk out of work early every day. And you stare slaving. And then when you're not at work, you're worried about work. I've taken work home. I ain't talking about that. But don't make the job. Don't make friends your God. Don't make family your God. Now, I don't know how many of you ever dated somebody 
that told you, I'm not jealous. But a few weeks later, they were digging in your phone. Come on, somebody. A few weeks later, somebody called you while you're with them. Who's that? How you know them? Sound like a man to me. Come on, somebody. Sound like a girl to me. They didn't tell you. But God told you from the beginning, I'm a jealous God. Who shut up? And I'm going to say this. There's blessing that has been delayed in your life. And the reason why it's been delayed is because God's not sure he's the only one in your life. <laughs> when he's sure that he's the only one, he'll open up heaven for you. Somebody in here <clears throat> is going to be blessed in abundance because you've never held anything back from God. God's going to bless your life in abundance. But he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. I'm going to say this and then I'm done. We have put our personal comfort ahead of God. If I had told y'all the air wasn't working, I think I'd be preaching about half of y'all. Because the rest of y'all be watching online. I can see them online in the comfort of my living room. Well, first of all, I didn't know. I wasn't trying to trick you. I didn't know. Then I had somebody on the way to fix it. And thank God that was even God. Come on, somebody. When the repairman gets a blessing, y'all ain't saying nothing. You know that God is in the midst. Hallelujah. God is in our midst. Saints, for 30 days, reorganize your priorities. Put God first. And watch him not only bless you spiritually, but watch him begin to deal with what has been taking up your attention. Anybody believe God can do that? Come on and give God praise right now. Elder Perry, there's a box on the altar. You see the box? Yeah, bring that box here. In this box of vials of oil, I did not know they would be this small. So it's enough for you to anoint yourself and anoint a friend, and you might be out of oil. But, but, it, but we made plenty. So if you run out, come on back. We got oil. But Elder Perry's going to give everybody a bottle. It's already been blessed. It's already been consecrated. Please take just one. I got folks already writing me saying, Bishop, would you send me a bottle of oil? All right? Because, and trust me, this is the assignment. When you get home, anoint yourself and anoint your house. Hey, Katana Masata. And watch God bless those things that concern you. Commit yourself to what God wants to do. He's going to bless you. Everybody give God praise. He has blessed us today. I need to say this to the church. And that is that I love Refuge Temple. This has been, hallelujah, the assignment that God gave me almost 30 years ago. And I love this church. I love everybody in this congregation. And I believe, God, for the best for our church, for your families, hallelujah, and for your lives. Maya, I'm so glad to see you. God bless you, sweetie. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for Maya being with us this morning. Everybody that's here, we love you. We appreciate you. I have a new assignment that all of you know about. And some of you were, were praying for it to happen. And if I could be candid, some of you didn't want it to happen. But, and I'll be honest, I was just waiting to see what was going to happen. But God has spoken. And I have been given this assignment that includes oversight of churches in Georgia and Alabama, Germany, Ghana, Ivory Coast, as, long as, the, as well as the assignment as the Apostolic Protocol. So it's a, been a very fast-paced couple of months, and literally my schedule doubled 
So when you don't see me, it's not because I don't want to be here. God knows I want to be here. All right. I'd rather preach here than anywhere else in the world because this is where God has assigned me to feed. But when I'm not here, I'm going to say this aloud. I'm going to say it to the folk in the back. When I'm not here, I need you here. Okay, four, you said you're going to be here. When I'm not here, I need you to be here. We are blessed with capable elders and ministers. Give God a praise for all the elders and ministers of Refuge Temple. And if I didn't think they could feed you, I would not have them here to preach to you. All right? I don't make haphazard decisions. I make prayerful decisions about who feeds this congregation. So when they preach, give them your prayers, give them your support, give them your love, give them your respect. And trust me, God's going to bless the church as we go. Come on, somebody. Because here's how I know it was God's will for me to be elected as an apostle. I laid, I laid on my face in this church and I said, God... If you can't make this assignment happen and bless this church, I don't want the assignment. That's what I told the Lord. That's what I told the Lord. I said, don't let me get elected if Refuge Temple will suffer because I'm not in this pulpit every time the door is open. And so because the Lord allowed me to get elected, I know he's going to bless this entire church. Anybody believe that? I know he's going to bless this entire church. So I just need all of us to be engaged. I need all of us to respond. I need all of us to be present physically, spiritually, mentally, and financially. And if we do that, God's going to keep on blessing in abundance. I'm saying it because I'm the angel of the house. Where, is that Phoenicia sitting back there? Where Phoenicia is sitting going to be full. Only three of y'all believe it. Where Phoenicia is sitting is going to be full. Because I know that's what God is able to do. But he can, you know, I could be here every Sunday. But if we don't pray, if we don't fast, if we don't evangelize, if we're not consistent and faithful, it doesn't matter whether I'm here or not, the church still won't grow. But if we all come together to do the will of God, you're going to see people coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west filling this church, and God is going to bless us. So I need everybody to get on board. Stay on board. I love you. I appreciate you. And as I told you before the election, the only reason why I was even considered, the only reason why I, wasn't, I was even considered was because of what God has done in Burlington. Not me, but Refuge Temple. So I celebrate what God is doing. I celebrate all of you. I thank God for all of you. I pray for all of you daily. And I'm hoping that somebody's praying for me. I'm hoping somebody's praying for me. God bless you. Let's get ready to receive our tithes and offering. Come on, deacons. Give God praise, everybody. It's offering time. Come on, give God praise. It's time to receive our tithes and our offering. And who's got my iPad? I want to ask everybody today to give a sacrifice gift. I'm not going to tell you what the sacrifice is. I'm going to just tell you make a sacrifice. So if a little bit better than what you normally do, add to it. Make a sacrifice. Make a sacrifice. God is going to bless you. Ushers are preparing, passing out envelopes. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. There's several ways to give. Team has put it on the screen how you can give on the television or rather on the social media how you can give. Everybody be a blessing today. Everybody make that sacrifice today and watch the Lord bless you and watch the Lord bless the work. And everybody be liberal and watch God do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's able. Remember you can give with the card machine. Remember you can give online through the website, or to um, Givelify, or to Cash App, dollar sign, one, capital O-N-E, Refuge, capital R-E-F-U-G-E, -E, one refuge. But I want everybody to participate in the offering. Hallelujah. You know what matters when it's time to give is not always the amount, it's your obedience. That's what matters. That's what matters. That's what matters. 
So be obedient and watch the Lord bless you in abundance. Let's stand, everybody. We receive our tithes and our offering. Everybody ought to be a tither. And I'm asking everybody to be a giver today and to offer God a sacrifice in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke. Thank you because today you have broken the power of stress and you've broken the power of fear and worry. Now bless us as we give. Some of us are giving out of a need. Some of us are giving and you've blessed us in abundance. But however we give, I want you to sanctify the gift. I want you to multiply the gift. And I want you to bless the giver in a profound way. Thank you, God, because you already know how to bless your children. In Jesus' name, everybody shout hallelujah. You're in the usher's hands. Come on and bring your gifts. While you're coming, let me make one announcement before we start singing. We're trying to reorganize my office so that I'm accessible and available. So Geneva has worked very hard along with the rest of the team, Elder Toll, Sister Mary, to try to reorganize some things, especially my calendar. I am not trying to be a big shot when I ask you to call somebody. I'm trying to make sure I'm here when you get here. All right, that's why I need people to keep my calendar. So if I send you to Geneva or I send you to Mary, it's not me trying to be grand. I'm just simply trying to stay organized so you don't say, Bishop, I came to the church and you weren't here because I could be somewhere else if it's not on my calendar. So we're trying to be organized, so help us out. Work with the, as digitized, I believe, you can go online and you can do what you need to do to reserve time, all right, in Jesus' name. Help us with that in the name of Jesus Christ. presence. Amen. Amen. Was anybody else blessed on today? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Amen. Amen. For a word. Amen. 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 It's good and it's great. Amen. Not to just have a pastor. Amen. But to have a pastor. Amen. In all that he is. Amen. But a pastor that hears from God. Amen. And deliver a word, a strong word. Amen. Amen. Just what the church needs. Amen. I know I needed it. Amen. Anybody else need that word on today? Amen. Anybody else need that filling? Amen. Anybody else need that visit? Amen. From the Holy Ghost. Amen. On today. Amen. And we bless God. Amen. Amen. Anybody else need that air? Amen. That's blowing freely. We thank you, sir. Amen. And we're happy you came in. Amen. Amen. And it was a blessing. Amen. The air went down just to get you here. Amen. So that you can get that blessing. Amen. That God had for you on today. Amen. In, 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 um, as far as announcements are concerned. Amen. We know the church is open. Amen. Amen. Um, for prayer. Amen. Amen. I love to stress the prayer days. Amen. Uh, we start prayer on Sunday, amen, Sunday at 9 o'clock, amen. Our mothers are here praying, amen, diligently, amen, amen. And then at 10, 10 o'clock, amen, we have our Sunday school, amen. 11.15, we start with our morning prayer, um, amen. 11.15 uh, prayer, amen, and we go until we start our service, amen, amen. 
Then we have our 6 p.m., 6 p.m., amen. Somebody say 6 p.m., 6 p.m., amen. We have our uh, bishop who leads us, amen, with our evening service, amen, on Zoom, amen. Then Monday, Monday at 8 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., we have in-person prayer, amen, prayer and word, amen, given here at the temple, amen. So meet us here at Monday at 8 p.m., amen. Then on Wednesday, we have noonday prayer, amen, noonday prayer, amen. And then on Friday, Friday at 7.30, amen, 7.30, amen, we have Zoom prayer, amen. And if you keep your eye on One Refuge, amen, it'll tell you at least once a month we try to meet in person on Fridays, amen, Friday night live, amen, where we will meet here, amen. And sometimes there's guest speakers, and sometimes we just meet and try to meet in person, amen, and have a service here, amen, amen. And then on Saturday, somebody look at your neighbor and say Saturday, Saturday at 10 a.m., amen, we meet and greet here, amen, 10 a.m. prayer, amen, one hour of power, amen, amen, where we come together, amen, and have prayer, amen. The common denominator in all that, amen, is that the doors are open for prayer. Amen. We are a praying church. Amen. Because the Bible says more things are wrought in prayer. Amen. Amen. And if we're going to win this community, amen, and continue to strengthen our relationship, amen, with God, amen, we have to do it through prayer. Amen. Amen. So there's plenty of opportunity, amen, for prayer. Amen. Amen. And then every every morning at 6.30 a.m., amen, every morning at 6.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m., amen, Bishop is on um, Zoom, amen, the conference call line and all of that, amen, with prayer, amen. And how many of us join that, amen, in the mornings, amen, 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 and it's a blessing. And if you can't join it, amen. Amen. It's recorded. Amen. And you can catch it at a later time. Amen. Amen. And there's always a word. Amen. And if you have any special prayer request, amen, you can just send it in. Amen. See it. See me after service. Amen. I'll get you the phone numbers where you can send it in. Amen. So that you can be added to the prayer list. Amen. For daily prayer. Amen. So that you too can be part of that testimony service. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and say today. Today, after service, amen, across the street in the, in the park, amen, the missionaries, amen, the missionaries will be serving the, um, will be serving food, amen, they're going to be serving the homeless, amen, is that what it is, amen, they're going to be serving the homeless, amen, across the street in the park, amen, it would be wonderful if all those that could and would, even if you're not a missionary, can come and join in, amen, and support them, amen, every hand helps, amen, Amen. To help support them after service. Amen. To help feed the community. Let them know that Refuge Temple is here. We do have handouts. Amen. You can come say a word. Amen. Give a prayer. Amen. And just be a, a, a beacon. Amen. Of Christ's light. Amen. Amen. So we welcome you to come. Amen. Across the street in the park. Amen. And join the missionaries on this um, venture. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. I, I know somebody's out there. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss. Amen. Amen. So if everyone is well, uh, we ask that you would stand to your feet. Amen. Just look to your left. Amen. We want to thank God. Amen. Uh, excuse me. I've got the card sitting here. We bless God for all of our visitors. Amen. Our visitors on today. Amen. God bless you. God bless you for being here with us today. Um, I have one visitor card, a sister Stephanie Rayhart. God bless you for coming in today. Amen. We bless you for visiting with us and all other visitors that came in today. We hope, we hope and pray, amen, that you enjoyed your time with us. Amen. And from Bishop and First Lady Davis, amen. God bless you. Amen. God intended for you to be here, amen. The word was intended with you in mind, amen. And we love and we adore you, amen. And Refuge Temple, if you see somebody you don't know or you see somebody you do know when you're walking out the door, amen, as you're walking around, amen, don't just speak to the people you know. Love on somebody and love on everybody, amen. Look to your left, look to your right, and you know how it goes. Tell somebody, I love you, and there's nothing 
you can do about it. Elder Taylor Jr., can you come and dismiss us, please? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your visitation. We thank you, Lord God, for meeting us, Lord God. And Lord, bless us as we go. Lord, help us to have faith, Lord God, and to meet our miracle, Lord God, that appointment that you have with us. Help us to have the faith to see it through. Today, we forget about everything that is stressing us in Jesus' name, and we will be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. All these things we ask in Jesus' name, let the church say, amen. amen.